Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. Star Citizen Alpha 3.12 has seen various planetary improvements and some of these are actually pretty awesome. Every patch seems to see various visuals sort of improved and updated and we've just had new elevator panels which are pretty basic but they're more functional than the silly little buttons we had before. We've got a better mining VFX and mining UI stuff going on. That's pretty solid now in the mining gameplay loop and the way it looks. Actually, talking about VFX, the Idris exploding is now pretty immense as well, but it's the sort of planets and moons and points of interest and biomes. They see a lot of love from patch to patch in Star Citizen. As Star Citizen build out more and more tools for their planetary tech and the ways that they are sort of like um, working out how they want the planets and getting more assets for the planets and building all the city sort of areas, I think a common question or concern here still is though, if it's going to take another four or more years to get Star Citizen into a beta and then more years to get it released, is Star Citizen going to look dated? Is it going to be old before it's even released? Now this video is largely an excuse for me to look at pretty things in Star Citizen and talk about some of the cool stuff that's coming in the game in the future. Star Citizen doesn't suffer from having to port their game over to consoles and they can focus just it being on the PC and their bespoke Gen 12 Vulcan based renderer that they plan to have with that that's going to be very hardware neutral so they can keep on improving and optimizing that without specifically having to put in tech that's only for Nvidia cards or only for AMD cards. But exactly what this is going to all lead to in the end is not known. On paper it sounds very sensible and good. Cloud Imperium are building up their Gen 12 renderer, they're building up their tools, they're building up all these sort of like better looking planets and assets it's not finalized, it's being built up, and they may subsume other tech that they see that's sensible to do along the way. Cloud Imperium keep updating their visuals and planetary tools, and Alpha 3.12 saw a lot of improvements for planets and moons. There are a mix of changes, they are trying to make the planets more realistic from a distance, high detail at all scales, and some much higher detail on the ground. The green areas on Hurston and the general biomes there look amazing now. The acid biomes there as well look much more subtle as well now. They're not bright yellow, you can just sort of see vents and sort of yellowish sort of um, hints and little details and sort of flourishes around. The water is starting to look a bit better and they are really more focused on getting the water to act correctly and tech for it at the moment before making it look amazing. Hurston is very contrasted with its city and various biomes, trash heaps, savannah and more and I do actually think it's probably my favourite planet it's either the green areas of microtech or the green areas of hurston and i do think it looks really really good the lighting and some of those city assets are really starting to look great now microtech very much has got some more interesting textures and colors going on it especially around its alpine areas those sort of mix of greens and browns together it looks like the density of trees is a lot higher in some areas as well and the trees look better although that could just be lighting or shadow updates and changes as well that have made the trees look a little bit different or a little bit better um, but that could just be me in that particular case a huge amount of the moons have seen updates to their assets textures color palettes and the sort of detail and height maps that they use but all of those planets and moons have seen a marked improvement to their visuals and details. The little Grange Point stations as well, so both the stations, the, the stations that have had additions with the refineries, and the gas clouds now surrounding them look amazing. There are various different tints of cloud colours and uh, all this as well, so basically depending on what area of Stanton you're in, you're going to have a different set of coloured um, gas clouds that you can potentially be in. Now, these Lagrange points and some of these other updates tank my frame rates in some situations, so there's obviously a lot more sort of optimization that needs to be done there. And there's a load more that Cloud Imperium are doing, trying to improve the visuals of Star Citizen from better lighting to more materials to new textures, new assets as they expound out their tech and tool set for the creation of planets and moons and star systems. And this is massively important because Star Citizen does need to look amazing at release and not dated, but it also needs to be released at some point, and these tools help with that. Something else that helps with that is the new turbulent-headed studio that Star Citizen has. 
that has a major focus, that new studio, of building new star systems and planets. The improvements to the tools and visuals literally will mean that all future planets get those improvements as they build them out, and they're going to be able to build them out at a massively quicker rate than they would otherwise. So it's going to be a few years rather than a decade. There are a few more pieces which are needed to bring all of this together though. Gas Giants, we know that they're planned to be coming early 2021, or at least um, Crusader is. Um, Crusader and Orison are supposed to be um, turning up in Q1 and Q2. Obviously, that could change when we see the roadmap updates. We want proper weather and updated water for planets at some point. We also want the touch blending. So there's some cool tech that they're using for having plants and sort of stuff move around um, as a vehicle or a player moves past them. They sort of bend and sometimes break. Jump points and server meshings needed to have multiple star systems. The dynamic economy or universe sim is needed to bring everything together and give you reasons to move around the verse and actually see all these different locations. And then obviously huge amounts of gameplay and gameplay loops for the reasons to, to be on those planets as, as well. I am really looking forward to animals and base building and NPCs moving around planets that all gives us more reasons to be on the ground as well. And there are dedicated teams working on all those features now, but we know that they are making more and more biomes and variants of them too as well. One of the other things that I would like to see is cityscapes with a bit more exploration potential with them. I don't want or need to explore all of Arc Corp, for example, and all its various mega cities, but I do want to see more locations there with a little bit more freeform exploration and some other bits going on there. Not a huge amount, just a little bit more. Do you know what I mean? I just want to be able to trundle around a bit. I'm not talking about the same sort of um, walking around a whole city like in Cyberpunk or in GTA 5, but just a little bit more. I want to be able to land on some buildings and explore them and, and things like that too. I am interested to know how far Star Citizen will go tech and tool wise and even if it will be sort of like by the time it's released best played at 8k with some other fancy new Vulcan tech and stuff how far will AI DLSS type scaling go there is a world of possibility not just from the tools that they um, are going to be using to build the game but the engine the renderer and the optimizations they make too the future is full of potential for Star Citizen and I think there are some concerns for such a massive hugely scaled and slow project that you can go well yeah I'm worried that it's gonna look dated I'm worried that it's not gonna live up to its hype now that's a fair point I don't think Star Citizen could possibly ever live up to all its hype but it doesn't need to it needs to live up to a large portion of its hype or some of its hype it will still be a great game and uh, as long as it is genuinely a great game and there's a lot going on with it and there are some gameplay mechanics and um, some of the areas look amazing. While I'm playing those gameplay mechanics, I'm probably going to be pretty happy. Also, there's some pretty cool bits already coming to the surface for Star Citizen even during its alpha phase. But what do you think? Do you think Star Citizen will look dated when it's released? Do you think that's a genuine worry? What do you think about how the planets and moons look now? Do you like the updates they've made or are you having a terrible time with frame rates in alpha 3.12? Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Shipmas! We're giving away a Mercury Star Runner in December because it's Christmas and we do it every month anyway. Zin, put a Mercury Star Runner in my hand. Because that's what we're giving away. And put a hat on it, like a Christmas hat. There you go. That's, that's animation for you, potentially. I just move my hand around. So just comment on any one of my videos during the month of December to be in for a chance of winning that. Also, Maybe give someone special the gift that keeps on giving. I'm talking, of course, about NordVPN. The links below. Also, don't forget Shadow. They do cloud-based gaming stuff, so you can get that as well. Thanks for watching, guys. Click the YouTube join button. Like and subscribe. Do all that sort of stuff. Thanks for supporting the channel. Merry Christmas. Oh, oh, oh. Merry Christmas.